grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship on the 20th Sunday of Pentecost, uh, the 18th of October. I can't believe it's already um, towards the end of the month. This is crazy, but uh, here we are. So um, today we are um, gathering at the studio at uh, St. Augustine and we are very pleased to have Reverend Paul back. So thank you for healing quickly and, and rejoining us. And um, we have Reverend Elise from the Parish of the Southern Trinity and Reverend Robert from All Saints downtown. And I'm Reverend Sharla from St. James. Um, I suppose we will uh, begin with our opening song, Lo, God is Here, Let Us Adore. It's found in your uh, blue song books, uh, common praise books at 328 or on your song sheet. Let us join together in our opening song. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant unto your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Our act of praise this morning is found in your song sheet, Majesty.
you are here. Tuck us into the cleft of the rock. Cover us with your hand when we are anxious that we may be courageous to do your will. Through Christ who calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, illumine for us this word that the message of the gospel may come to us in power. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and I have also found fate, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this, is, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight and your people unless you go with us? In this way, we shall be distinct. I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and you will proclaim bef and will proclaim before you the name the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 99. The Lord is King. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all his peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You are a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, 
for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serving a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to turn to your song sheet and let us sing, I look to the shepherd. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, 
the emperors. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be forever acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome back to some conversation this morning. Uh, you heard all kinds of things from me last week, an opportunity for me to offer a sermon from the backyard at, uh, at St. James Rectory, and uh, thank you to all of my friends here who were able to lead us in worship last Sunday as I was absent from that. But we're back again in full force, all four of us sitting around the, the circle, and it's time for us to get into one of our regular gospel discussions. So uh, we're going to start out right out of the gate with our first question, and I think it would be best for somebody else to go first, because everybody heard all kinds of stuff from me <laughs> last week. Uh, where is the trouble or the challenge that you're finding in this passage this morning? Who would like to start us off? I oh, Robert does. <laughs> hey, Robert. Yeah, Robert. 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 Uh, uh, so the the trouble I'm seeing um, is uh, the 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 conversation um, or the the sort of plotting um, that people are doing uh, to try and catch somebody out uh, to catch Jesus out um, in the midst of the temple. They're they're sort of uh, in one of the temple courts and. Um, and the fact that people who are supposed to have sort of the, the, the welfare of the people um, of, of Israel at, at heart are trying to catch out one of their own and sort of entrap them in, in something, entrap Jesus in something. Um, and, uh, and there's lots of grace to be found in the way he turns it around. But, but I think the trap being laid is, is where the trouble is for me. Yep. Very sure. Yeah. Who wants to jump in next? Um, yeah, I'm along the same lines as, as Robert, but also it's interesting to me that um, that okay, now I've lost it again. I'm having a hard time this week, guys. Sorry. Um, that not only are they trying to entrap him, but they're actually asking him questions in front of other people, which makes them have the opportunity of looking bad. Right. Right? Right. Like, they're kind of giving them... They set them themselves the, up for... Yeah, yeah. 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 Can you hear that? Yeah. I think, um, I'm going to say, yep, same thing. I think we're, we're in the same in the same sermon uh, boat this week. Um, but I think, just to add to that, it's that, um, teacher, we know that you are sincere. That dripping with, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that sort of you know when when somebody is um, in particularly when you know somebody is baiting you right somebody's yeah. testing you and they come with that saccharine sort of thing that yeah. that kind of gets me this week yeah yeah I think yeah I'm, I'm certainly in the same area I think that that next piece of it though right why are you putting me to the test I think is a real challenge for me how often do we put Jesus to the test whether it's um, somebody else is putting our Savior to the test, or there's moments in our own lives that we put Jesus to the test. Um, and um, it's interesting, the, the Pharisees also bring in the Herodians, which they really don't get along particularly well, but here they are uh, clashing for a similar purpose. And um, how often do we find ourselves uh, caught up in that idea of, um, we'll even agree with somebody who doesn't agree with us in order to get what we want. The empty of my enemies. Right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, um, so there's, there's some of that challenge, right? Who are we willing to give? What integrity of our own are we willing to give up um, in order to get what we want out of something else? Um, so that, that, I think, is touching for me a little bit as well as I, as I read this. So, so where's the trouble in the world then? So if that's our trouble in the text is this, this idea of uh, that sappy, really icky, sticky, gross um, testing of Jesus by, by this group. Where's the trouble in the, in the world? So who wants to start? At least you're going to start us up? All right. Yeah. Um, for me, we have testing going on around us every single minute of every day in all of this. Um, we have people who are professionals in their field who are testing each other. Um, we have people who are believing one or the other and then finding out that the answer is wrong. Maybe in both cases, you know? Um, 
And it's it's just it becomes this this cacophony of nonsense in the end because nobody really knows what they're talking about in, in COVID really um, because things keep changing, you know. Um, there's 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 always new information coming out. And until we get further and further along into it, we're not really going to understand this. The things that they said at the start aren't true now, right? So, so for me, that's the trouble that I see yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I used your argument uh, about uh, the, the testing that we do of God um, uh, as my page two. Uh, and, yeah, okay. uh, and I think that, that all of us are... Um, Guilty of the of the 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 act of, of putting God to the test, um, and we all make bargains with God. I'll do this for you, God, if you just turn turn this thing around for me. Um, Particularly an exam time. Uh, or or um, <laughs> the the last month of every uh, sports leagues. Yeah, uh, that's, play, right. that's right. Uh, if you'll just go <laughs> to whatever team you happen to be following at the time, the the championship. I'll do this. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I'm absolutely positive that God doesn't care about any of those. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> outcome of any uh, except for the Maple Leafs. Yeah, obviously he doesn't care about the Leafs. Okay, God may care about the outcome of Maple Leafs games, but it's not in their favor. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Just seeing who real people of faith are. <laughs> Forty years we'll in the desert. The fans, <laughs> and, you know, we'll be writing to me all sense, yeah. uh, right. But I think we're all guilty of, of even that that sort of passive aggressive testing of of the people of God um, and, and the body of Christ um, uh, militant here on earth. Like I think we're we all get that sort of get our backs up about some point of uh, I don't know liturgics or, or dogmatics or any of the things that we can get our backs up about um, that are peripheral to the central message of the gospel. Um, like the, the, the Herodians and, and Pharisees carrying idols, which, which, which was the sin that they were guilty of, carrying idols, pictures of the face of the emperor. In the temple. Into no the less. temple. <laughs> no uh, because I, I gather they probably couldn't find somewhere to leave them outside the temple, or didn't um, didn't even think about it because we, although I don't carry much cash anymore, yeah. but, but carrying cash is the thing that, that we do and have to do to get by in society. Um, but I think we're all guilty of that passive aggressiveness yeah. um, to each other and to the the rest of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's that's the trouble in the world for me. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, I'm gonna sort of tag probably more on Robert. Um, but uh, same with Elise is the um, the questioning or the the entrapping and the things that we do to one another um, is is sort of where I see this. I, I look at um, something right now that um, is sort of highly televised. I, I, I like to watch the news, but holy cow, if I've got to watch any more of this Supreme Court nomination conversation, I might just you know stop watching the news. But there's one instance where, you know, one people are saying you're a person of faith and therefore you're going to use your, yeah. your faith to make decisions on the Supreme Court. And not that any of this in, uh, impacts us here in Canada in any way um, necessarily at the moment, but um, that's sort of a magnify of how we treat each other in our world even on this level. Um, you know, we, we make judgments about people, oh, you're a church person, that must mean that, or you're a not a church person, that must mean that, yeah. you know, whatever it is, and it's that, that um, sneaking around that we as humans do, um, even calling in our enemies to be allies in yeah. certain ways yeah. to, you know, I don't like this person, so and that person doesn't like this person, so now we're buddies and we're gonna gang up. Like you see that online, you see it. I you know um, if if we sort of bring it closer to home, some of the comments that that I see on um, the the Winter Star articles or the the um, articles or the the information that's put out by the local health unit, um, we need to. Uh, um, you know, it just the constant attack, right? So that's that's where I see the trouble in our world that's sort of similar. 
Yeah, I, I don't think I have a whole lot to add, actually. I think um, everything that's been sort of shared is that, that real sense. The, the only thing I really, I really struggle with is that conflict of um, picking up somebody else who we really don't necessarily agree with most of the time. But say, oh, I like that argument. I'm going to pull that and use that in my argument, even though it might not, it might actually clash with what we actually believe, um, right? So, you know, did the Pharisees believe that, you know, this this coin? Are we allowed to pay taxes to the emperor? It sort of seems like a stupid question, right? If you want to be a, a member of society, you're paying taxes, right? There, there's not really a well, and yet if we can figure out a way to take that. Uh, yeah, there's some people that don't, but we won't get into that. Anymore. <laughs> but uh, that sense of um, that sense of this is a really stupid question. Um, but here's my opportunity to gang up on you with somebody else who doesn't usually agree with me, but they're going to agree with me on this. It, in in it that seems, super sticky sector. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There, there's just that real, and it's it's everywhere. It's it's ever present. So all right. So moving on. Let, let's. Let's agree to, to, to move on to one of those. Um, the grace or love in the passage, where, where are we finding that? Robert, do you want to jump in on that one? Um, I, I love the way Jesus makes his detractors play a stupid game. Mm -hmm. and, they win, and they win a stupid prize. Like they win, um, they win the right to, to pay taxes to the, uh, the emperor, um, and um, and keep the, the things of God to, to God. So they played a stupid game and won a really stupid prize. Like to build on what, what Paul was saying, they, um, he he has turned it around, and I just love the way he's done it. <laughs> like I just, it's really it brings a smile to my face when he turns the the sort of uh, legally questions and and uh, legal legal questions into to, to a game and and. Wins, wins the game, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, and I think that um, the the grace in that is is just seeing Jesus like in a in a, a light way. Like he's he's having fun with them, um, and to see that that yes, God has a sense of humor. Which I, I you know the the fact that that God has. I, I'm sure that God has a sense of humor because of the fact that I am not a morning person and this job requires a lot of <laughs> morning hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I'm just sure that God has a sense of humor. But but to see something like this just highlights God's sense of humor to me and, and I need that bit of grace at the moment. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I, do you mind? No, oh, I'm going to jump in because I want to tag off, off that a little bit. Um, one of the things that I find, and I'm not even sure if this is gracious or not. So the fact that he plays this game, right? The fact that he he says, "Well, show me, show me what you've got," and they're standing in the middle of the temple, and they shouldn't even have that on them to begin with, right? So, um, is is it grace? Maybe he didn't, you know, smite them right out of the gate. Um, <laughs> you know, he didn't, and at the same time, he didn't back down and run away. So he, um, I often talk about the third way, right? There's always that third way, which is so hard to find. And I think that is where I find Jesus is offering that third option. Okay, I'll answer your question, but first, you're going to look like a moron, <laughs> right? You're going to look like a complete idiot standing in the temple with Caesar's head on coins in your hands that you're not supposed to have. Um, but then I'm not going to go and turn you in, <laughs> right? Um, but that's enough for you to understand mm -hmm. the shame or the, you know, whatever that is. Um, so that's, I, I'm going to say that's where I sort of find grace a little bit, maybe, mm -hmm. if we can call it that. So, yeah, that's where I would go. You want to? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm along with you guys. I, I see a lot of grace in this in many ways. Um, for one thing, um, also, I wondered with Jesus, his patience, that this stuff goes on and on and on and on and on. I'm sure he face palms, you know, like, come on, really? <laughs> you know, here we go again. But, but, but just that he's able to take these words and turn them around into making something that means something to us even now. Right? Um, that, that's grace as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the grace that I see in all of this is 
Uh, you know, Jesus in, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus is writing to Hebrew people, or pardon me, Matthew is writing to Hebrew people. He's talking to people who are Jewish folks, right? And they understand the rules. They know uh, the way that things are supposed to go. They, they get it, right? They are the Pharisees people, really, the, the, the people that uh, are being written to in Matthew's gospel. And here's Jesus saying, okay, so you've got to have a separation between what is the world, what is worldly, and what is godly. Um, so the grace that happens in the passage for me is Jesus giving us permission to have moments in life where we say, okay, this is something that I have to do because it's a requirement of being a human being living in the country that I live in, which, yes, my, my religion, my faith, my belief, my trust, my understanding of gospel can, can speak to that, um, but it isn't that they have to be separate, right? I, I can have them separate but still talking to each other. Um, so Jesus says, yeah, so if this is Caesar's, then give it to Caesar. If this is God's, give it to God's. Uh, but at the same time, acknowledging the fact that there still has to be something that is Caesar's. Right? There is still tax. There is still um, being part of civilization. I think that's grace in this is that Jesus doesn't say, yeah, forget Caesar. You know, forget the emperor, forget Rome, forget any of those other bodies that are in existence. There, there has to be a connection where we can live both in the, in the civil world and in the, the, the faith-based world. So um, I'm going to jump in on that and, and how that twists into today before I share that last question is, where's that grace and love in our world? Well, our faith has to, has to feed into all of our decisions that we're making. Yes, there is a difference between um, politics and religion. Yes, there's a difference between church and state. And yet we still are allowed to, according to scripture, we're still allowed to say, okay, they're separate but I can still let that voice of mine speak to what is real. So um, I think God, Jesus telling us, yeah, there are two separate things here, but you can live in both of them, um, I think is grace. So, so where is the grace of love in the world? Where are you seeing that? Robert, do you want to jump in? Um, the, the grace I see is in, in the good humor of, of Jesus and, and his modeling good humor in the midst of what, what is essentially an attempted persecution <laughs> um, and and to be able to to turn around on somebody who's who's coming at you or um, who has it in for you or whatever it is that we think of the person who's coming at us to be able to to have the good humor and the wit and the the presence of mind to, to turn that around and um, they they left amazed we're told here um, in, in scripture uh, that when they heard it they were amazed and left them and went away so like I, I think there is some disarming power and some grace um, imparted from that um, in being able to to turn things around on people who are who are having at us and also the to, to Paul's point um, that that separation um, uh, that we have things that we have to do in order to live well together with each other, um, but also the the line that we use in in um, in a funeral liturgy that neither you know angels nor principalities can keep us from from the love of God. I think that even the that God is present in in the principalities of the world, the the, the realms of the world um, in in this day and age. Um, uh, whether it's it's always evident sometimes we, we sometimes have to dig, dig a little bit, but. But that God is there in the midst of that, and and God's sense of humor toward all of us. Yeah, for me, the grace that I'm seeing is is the dialogues that are happening because of what's happening in the world. Um, I have a lot more people who come with true questions about what we're called to be and do in this world, and and people are really searching right now you know and not all of it's good i'm not saying that but but there are enough people who are, are looking for answers in, in all of this that it makes it a, a, a grace for me yeah, for sure yeah i think um for me the the grace is the as robert alluded to they they went away amazed um and the the fact that we can have people who um who are uh negative um, and on the attack like I, we were talking earlier about like online and, and negative comments that we can have we can have that but at what point do people go 
okay, and walk away um, instead of constantly having those those attacks, right? Um, you know, um, as we were sort of joking earlier, we'll agree to disagree um, on things, right? Um, and and it's, that's okay. Um, and what I love about this is that God makes room for that. Um, it makes God makes room for us to um, disagree on things and yet still be children of God. Um, and <laughs> Chris is holding up his bubbly drink. It's just <laughs> awful stuff. We'll agree to disagree on bubbly. Um, but um, yeah, so so we have that that ability to all go away amazed um, at still being a child of God, even when we're. Um, negative and when we're we're doing what we're called to do so that's sort of where i'm going to go with grace in regards to bubbly the uh <laughs> opinions expressed by the members of the panel are not necessarily <laughs> <laughs> get ourselves out of trouble with the fancy corporation here um, good. <laughs> all right so let, let's pray to wrap this up as we as we stand here and, or sit here or share here these words of god Heavenly God, as we come to you with questions, sometimes that are testing, sometimes that are simple, sometimes that are so deep and, and heartfelt that we need you to bring an answer to us. We give thanks that you offer us that answer, sometimes opening our eyes to the simplicity of how the answer can be handled, sometimes offering us an answer that is so complex that we can do nothing but be amazed and go away knowing that you are God. We give thanks for this opportunity to gather to hear those questions and to present ourselves to you, both living in this world and in your world, as we continue to offer ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us now join together and confess our faith as we say, I believe, believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Loving God, you are steadfast, forever unfolding even when we cannot accept ourselves. May your spirit empower us to imitate you. May your spirit empower us to imitate you by receiving those who feel judged and rejected. May your spirit empower us to imitate you by walking alongside those who despair. May your spirit empower us to imitate you by encouraging those who tend to the broken. May your spirit empower us to imitate you by affirming those who labor in love. We lift into your tender care those whose bodies, minds, or spirits have been weakened or crushed. We lift up to you your compassionate grace the, for those whose burdens, guilts, or fears seem too massive to bear. We lift before you your expansive mercy for those, those whose hatred, rage or vengeance cannot be contained. We lift up to you those who are on our hearts and on our minds, either silently or aloud, as we offer those names to you now. Receive all these cares, loving God, and fill us with the light of Christ through the work of your Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we come before God with all that we have and all that we have received from God, Jesus invites us to render to God the things that are God's.
trusting in God's infinite care, we gratefully present our offerings. Our offertory hymn this morning is in your hymn book, number 350, or in your song sheet. Stand up and bless the Lord. represent as we pour out your love and grace on those who long to hear your word to them, to see your power at work within them, to feel your comfort beside them through the generous gifts of your spirit. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now may God tuck us securely into the cleft of the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ. May we sense the inexpressible law of God's glory passing over us. And may we rest in the peace that passes all understanding and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements as we uh, come to the conclusion of our worship this day. Uh, please do remember our drive through food drive um, this afternoon uh, from noon till 1240, or 12.40 at, uh, at All Saints Downtown from 1 until 1.40 at St. Augustine, um, and from 2 until 2.40 at St. James in Roseland. Uh, we're supporting this week, um, or this month, I guess, um, Street Help uh, downtown, who will support uh, the community uh, that is, as we speak, uh, bracing themselves for winter uh, and gathering in all that they will need uh, to survive that, uh, that season. Uh, so please do consider bringing hats and mitts and scarves um, and tarps and, and the, the sort of small uh, personal items that 
that will help uh, those folks make it through the winter uh, and stay warm. I do also consider bringing in uh, food items uh, that are easily transported and don't require utensils to consume. Uh, snack foods, uh, granola bars, those, that sort of thing. Uh, high protein, uh, but easily transported uh, to help people uh, through this coming winter. Are there any other announcements that the community should hear? Just one other announcement we should probably share. Um, at Bishop Todd's request, uh, this week coming up would be our normal Bishop's Clergy Conference, where your clergy would head out of town for a few days uh, for some re uh, revitalization, I guess, some, some re-engaging re with our scriptures as we would worship together, uh, for some rest and relaxation as we'd share some, share some time of uh, some social time as well as just some general uh, rebuilding of ourselves. Unfortunately, because of our COVID-19 challenges, we're not able to gather together for our clergy conference the same way we usually have. Uh, however, Bishop Todd has requested that all of the clergy of the diocese uh, take a couple of days off this week uh, where we would normally spend our time in Niagara Falls for clergy conference. Um, he will be opening our, our, our time away, if you will, with a worship on Wednesday um, and wrap up our time away with worship on Friday. Um, and a number of the clergy gathered around the table here right now will be away for a couple of days this week. So uh, if you're having trouble getting a hold of your clergy person, please just leave a message for them on their answering machine. Um, and I'm sure they'll get back to you when they're uh, not immersed in a book or not uh, taking that time to relax and regenerate in one way or another. So. Uh, please be patient with your clergy this week as you're trying to find them, as we are actually on, on our retreat time uh, for a couple of days this week as we uh, uh, follow our bishop's instructions and take that time away. Um, so that's just a, a quick sharing. Please be patient and feel free to leave a message. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. <laughs> our closing hymn this morning is in your blue hymn book number 380 or in your song sheet, O Worship the King.
Brothers and sisters, beloved by God who has chosen you, the gospel came to you not only in the word, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. Go out now in joy. Be an example to all, empowered to love the unlovable, and forgive the unforgivable in the graceful, filled name of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.